Jacksonville. It is Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, 92.5 FM. With Dylan Denmark, the Hacker Ryan Green with you at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday. Oh, I love this. We're back in our normal time slot now, Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Not that Denmark and I didn't absolutely love doing 10 o'clock to midnight every Tuesday, and that was the highlight of both of our weeks. But we certainly enjoy being back at 8 o'clock on Tuesday with the new schedule here on 1010XL. So now Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. right here on both 1010XL and 92.5 FM. We got a lot to get into tonight. We are now T-minus 23 days Till the NFL draft up in Detroit. It is three weeks from Thursday. Of course, the Jaguars hold the 17th pick in round number one. We will talk Jaguars. We will talk NFL draft. And I'll actually begin there. We have a guest coming up as well. My buddy Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. Some of you do not like Chad very much. Some of you like Chad, and some of you probably don't know Chad. Chad Forbes is a guy that does rumors, NFL scuttlebutt, I guess, has connections within the league, I think it's safe to say. Um, But he tells you what he thinks, man. And that's why we love having him on. And I know he has ruffled some Jaguar feathers and fans the wrong way in the past on social media, but... Don't ask him if you don't want his honest opinion. So Chad will come on, give his honest thoughts about free agency, and then give his thoughts on what the Jaguars may do or what they need to do in his opinion at number 17. And I can tell you, he's got a very, very strong conviction about who Jacksonville needs to draft at number 17. You'll hear his thoughts. You can respond uh, if you'd like. Again, Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. He comes up in less than 15 minutes. We do have a final four to discuss as well out in Glendale, Arizona, UConn, Purdue, North Carolina State, and Alabama. Mark Wise of ESPN joins me at the top of the 9 o'clock hour. Mark Wise, interestingly enough, was a graduate assistant four decades ago on one of these teams that'll be competing in the Final Four coming up on Saturday night. So we'll go down memory lane with Mark. We'll get his thoughts on the Final Four. Can anybody stop UConn? We'll also get a thought from Mark on Riley Kugel, who announced his intentions to transfer from the University of Florida. So Mark Wise at the top of the 9 o'clock hour. Chad Forbes talking NFL, Jaguars, and draft in less than 20 minutes every night here on hacker after dark we do kick it off with a big deal of the night and dylan denmark let's do that right now time now for the big deal of the night what's the big deal what is the big deal deal. it is a big deal on hacker after dark so every night this week we're gonna go down memory lane Not that it's a complete and total 100% defense of Trent Baalke, but I'm just going to put into perspective what this team and roster looked like in 2020, the COVID year, compared to what it looks like now, three years into Trent Baalke's tenure as Jaguar general manager. Last night, we did quarterbacks and running backs. Tonight, It's all about wide receivers. It's all about the tight end position. So if you rewind the clock back to 2020, and keep in mind, that's not that long ago. That's when we were all in our house wearing masks, right? Nobody could go to the NFL games. It sucked. It was awful. But it wasn't that long ago. We're talking less than 48 months ago. This is what the Jacksonville Jaguar roster looked like. In fact, if you want to get technical... September of 2020, you're talking 42 months is how long ago this was. The leading receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2020. Receiving yards, the leading guy was DJ Chark. 706 receiving yards. 
Second was Keelan Cole at 642. Third was LaVisca Chenault at 600. Chenault led the team in catches that year, 2020, the 1-15 in year. Chenault led the team in catches with 58. 58 catches led the Jacksonville Jaguars just three and a half years ago prior to Trent Baalke taking over as full-time general manager. The tight end position that year looks even worse. Your leading receiver as far as the tight end room in 2020 was Tyler Eifert. Yeah, let that sink in. Tyler Eifert. 36 catches Tyler Eifert had in 2020 for an absolutely whopping 349 yards and two touchdowns. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was your leading tight end. Yardage and receiving. 36 grabs, 349 yards, and two touchdowns. By the way, friend of the station, James O'Shaughnessy, was second among tight ends with 28 grabs in 2020. That's awful, right? I mean, that's terrible. And we know this. As we go position by position, we know it's awful. That team in 2020 lost 15 games in a row. Remember, they won opening day against Indianapolis. They would not win again the remainder of the year, losing 15 games in a row. Thankfully, Dave Caldwell was fired And that nonsense was gone. Obviously, Doug Marone would go on to lose his job. And Trent Baalke, who was in the building in 2020, but he was not the acting general manager. He was an assistant, became GM at the beginning of the 2021 campaign. Since Dave, or uh, since rather Trent Baalke has taken over, All the Jaguars have done is add Evan Ingram, who's already in the conversation for the best tight end in franchise history. They've added Christian Kirk, who was worth every penny of that contract they gave him. They've added Zay Jones, who surpassed expectations in year one. You got to give him credit at least for one year for Calvin Ridley. Obviously, it did not end the way we wanted. But Calvin Ridley is a heck of a lot better than LaVisca Chenault, Keelan Cole, and DJ Chark. And most recently, the Jaguars added Gabe Davis from Buffalo. So Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Gabe Davis. That's what the Jaguars currently have coming into the 24 season with general manager Trent Baalke. Compare that to 2020 with Dave Caldwell. Evan Ingram versus Tyler Eifert. Who are you taking? Right. Check Mark Balky. Christian Kirk, DJ Chark. Who are you taking? Yeah. Check Mark Balky. Zay Jones or Keelan Cole. Who are you taking? I'm going to take a healthy Zay Jones. Check Mark Balky. And then finally, Gabe Davis or LaVisca Chenault. I'm going to take Gabe Davis. Trent Baalke has upgraded the wide receiver room in marvelous fashion over the last three years. And the tight end room is a complete 180-degree difference. You can't get much further away from Tyler Eifert than you have with Evan Ingram. It is night and day. Just again, every night, a couple of minutes, just to point out that I know you guys don't like Balky, and I know most of you have had it with him, and you think he's terrible and the worst GM, and you're thinking about going back to the clown outfits, and why didn't he sign Allen long-term? Why did he botch Ridley? His drafting sucks. I mean, I get it. I hear all of it every day. He is head and shoulders better than any general manager this franchise has had in two decades, and it is not close. Not close at all. And he inherited a dumpster fire. He inherited a roster that was 1-15, in 15, coming off 15 losses in a row. NFL teams don't lose 15 games in a row. They just don't. Jaguars did in 2020. They were awful. 
And that's what Balky has been given the task to clean up, and I think he's done a decent job. Not a great job. I wouldn't even call it necessarily a very good job, but I would call it a decent job in the last three years. That brings me back briefly to Gabe Davis. Have you guys, like me, seen all the negative reaction to the Gabe Davis signing? Not so much locally, but nationally. It's getting panned, right? A couple websites had it as the worst signing in free agency. A couple of people that I trust, right, in the NFL media, guys we've had on this show as guests, say, man, they overpaid for Gabe Davis. I don't like it. You know what it reminds me of? You know what it has the vibe of to me? It has the vibe of Christian Kirk two years ago. Remember the thought nationally, ugh, the Jaguars resetting the wide receiver market with Christian Kirk. What are they doing? Terrible. Way overpaid Christian Kirk. Awful signing. You don't hear much of that anymore. When Christian Kirk's healthy, he's been a heck of a player here. I get the feeling Gabe Davis is going to have a similar result. Get him out from behind Stephon Diggs and Buffalo. Get him back to his family and friends. Keep in mind, he played a college ball in Orlando at UCF. A lot of expectations for Gabe Davis after that four-touchdown performance in the playoffs. Did he live up to those expectations? No. Truthfully, he did not, but... Now there's not a lot of expectation. In fact, maybe there'll be a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. If we've heard it, you know he's heard it. Worst free agent signing this signing period? No, sir. No way, shape, or form. I think Gabe Davis is going to be a good player for the Jaguars. He's 25. By the way, happy belated birthday to Gabe Davis. I believe he turned 25 yesterday. You signed a 25-year-old wide receiver... It's already got 27 career touchdowns. You signed a 25-year-old wide receiver that has had 40-plus catches a majority of his career single season in the, in the NFL. I like the Gabe Davis signing. I think the same people that told you how awful Christian Kirk's signing was two years ago, that you don't hear about that anymore, are the same people talking bad about Gabe Davis. And I get the feeling in Doug Peterson's offense with Trevor Lawrence and Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk, and we'll see what they do in the draft, Zay Jones potentially. I think Gabe Davis is going to have a big positive impact on this football team in 2024 and for the foreseeable future. And as it stands right now, I applaud Trent Baalke for bringing Gabe Davis in. I think that'll be a good signing in the short term and potentially in the long term. 641-1010 is the phone number on the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures. Your thoughts always welcome here on a Tuesday night edition of Hacker After Dark. Denmark, I know you're enjoying this as much as I am, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock on Tuesdays. Yeah, uh, I... Anytime, anytime anybody says anything that we got moved up, I always say, uh, let the church say amen. Because uh, it's not bad coming in here at 10 to midnight, but for me, uh, making that turnaround from midnight and then coming back here at 10 a.m. is uh, kind of tough sometimes. But, uh, I mean, I say it's tough, but, I mean, I used to work outside and, you know, I used to work in, with semis and, and move freight and, you know, cut grass so it's really not that bad yeah we're not laying tile here yeah, we're not and, doing the know, sweating and you know having our fingers bleeding and all that but right you know, we're not the construction not guys we're not the roofers we certainly do not take those people for granted but 10 to midnight's 10 to midnight you're waiting i mean I, 8 to 10 you wait all day to do a show but getting here 10 to midnight oh that was kind of wearing on both of us so i think i speak for denmark and myself very very happy that we are now 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock every night of the week, Monday through Friday, right here with you on Hacker After Dark. Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. Chad can ruffle feathers. He can rub people the wrong way. Jaguar fans, those of you that follow him, know him on social media. I know what you've said about him in the past, but Chad's been right. 
about a lot of things. I enjoy having him on. I enjoy having that perspective. I do think that he knows people from around the league. I'll tell you this. I remember when we had him on to preview free agency, he said, keep an eye out for the Tennessee Titans. They got all that money. They're going to spend it, and they're going to make a splash at wide receiver. He didn't name Calvin Ridley by name, but he said they're going to spend that money, and they're going to make a splash at wide receiver. And what did the Titans do? They made a splash at wide receiver. What does Chad Forbes think about the Jaguars' free agent hall? I'm going to ask him straight up about Gabe Davis. Is he one of the guys that doesn't like that signing? And with all that being said, we're going to focus on the draft. And Chad has a guy that he has very, very strong feelings that the Jaguars should draft at 17. Let's talk Jaguars. Let's talk draft. Let's recap free agency. Let's do that with that with Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. He's next. Hacker After Dark on a Tuesday night in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're glad you're with us right here on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. 1010XL takes you behind the microphone. You'll do anything you can to ruin my day, won't you? Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. I got up today feeling so good. You couldn't leave us alone. Mornings on 1010XL. We were doing so well. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Bianca's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Test your aim to help local kids succeed. It's the 6th Annual Mackenzie Noel Wilson Foundation Clay Shoot to support the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northeast Florida and Mackenzie's Camp Deep Pond, Thursday, May 13th at Jack's Clay Target Sports. Get your team and the Boys and Girls Club take care of the rest. Ammo, cart, clays, breakfast bites, lunch, and goodies. Proceeds benefit 56 area clubs serving over 5,200 area kids every day. Go to bgcnf.org slash events. Did you know Prime Roofing manufactures, fabricates, and installs their metal roofs? If you're thinking about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Schedule an estimate today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. The Drill, mornings on 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Hey, Jacksonville, I'm sure by now you've seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We are an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We are committed to customer service, reliability, and have unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today. GFL, green for life. You know, they say April showers bring May flowers, but about nigh, they're bringing more than just blooms this April. Hicken here, gang. It's time to spring into action and refresh your vision for the brighter days ahead. Don't let cloudy vision rain on your parade. From dry eyes and allergies causing irritation to cataracts blurring your vision, about nigh can help protect what's important to you. If you're experiencing problems with your vision, call or visit boutonigh.com to schedule your consultation. About nigh and Associates, keeping the first coast focused. Ever wonder how you can transform your living spaces into captivating works of art? At First Coast Lighting and Fans, they offer a huge selection of high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness. Visit their showroom on Phillips Highway at the Avenues and step into a world of quality without compromise. Discover the difference that locally owned expertise makes and let them help you experience the transformation from average to extraordinary. At First Coast Lighting and Fans. 
This is Keith Catlin for Catlin Truck Accessories, and we are so blessed to be in business for over 100 years. Over 100 years of the best product and customer service means you can count on Catlin. From roll and lock bed covers to Lear toppers to cam locker toolboxes, Catlin Truck Accessories has you covered when it comes to your truck or van. We do those too. Got a fleet of vehicles? We can outfit them all. Who can you count on? Count on Catlin. One name, one location, 100 years. You can count on Catlin. Have you or someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away? I'm Susan Cohen, and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein & Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI and all criminal offenses. I've been named the best DUI attorney in the state, and David has been named the best criminal defense lawyer in Jacksonville. In your battle with the justice system, there is only one thing you need to know. Dial David 24-7 at Epstein & Robbins. 354-5645. Catch Gators baseball all season long on 1010XL. Brought to you by Farrah and Farrah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. And Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL at 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Now that free agency is all but in the rearview mirror, all eyes now turn to the draft. That is three weeks from this Thursday night. Of course, the Jaguars hold the 17th pick in round one. We will look at the draft, but we'll also look back on free agency and how what the Jaguars did will certainly affect what they do in three weeks' time. Chad Forbes is a great asset when it comes to NFL news and rumors. You can follow him on social media at NFL Draft Bites, and he's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Chad, how you doing? Feels like the quiet before the storm about you know three weeks after the draft, and it's an exciting time, and uh, let's get into it. Yeah, Chad, you and I haven't spoken since free agency uh, the Jaguars, one of the most active teams. They released some guys. They lost some guys. They certainly brought in a lot of guys. Chad, in totality, what did you make out of what the Jaguars have done so far? Yeah, they did a good job with the offensive line on the cheap, bringing in Morse to stabilize center. Fortner was a major issue. And then they brought back Cleveland at a pretty reasonable rate. Familiarity with the offensive line coach did a nice job there at left guard. So stabilizing that offensive line was obviously a huge focus going into free agency. And then on the defensive side, I just I love the Eric Armstead addition. The other two moves, the Darby and Darnell Savage, didn't make as much sense to me. But Eric Armstead is you know really a fantastic player. You put him with Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker, and you've got a pretty good pass rush. If the Jaguars' starting offensive line on opening day is Cam Robinson, Ezra Cleveland, Mitch Morse, Brandon Sheriff, Anton Harrison, are you good with that? Uh, it's not perfect. Hopefully, Cam Robinson is back. Right, you got Walker Little sitting there on the bench. But what they did in free agency dictates that they really don't have to address that early in the draft. Maybe they look for like a center on day three or a guard kind of looking down the line for the right side. But, uh, yeah, they've got better depth than when they entered free agency, and the group is improved. Chad Forbes here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Chad, Calvin Ridley is gone. Gabe Davis is here. We'll get to Gabe Davis in a moment. Uh, your thoughts on Ridley and what Tennessee got him, gave him to get him up to Nashville? Yeah, sure. There's a lot of money. And uh, you know, the Jaguars pivoted to Gabriel Davis. You've heard some rumors about them looking at Brandon Ayuk. I think they're at 17. One of those wide receivers might fall into their lap, whether it's a Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU or Adonai Mitchell from Texas. You want to keep giving uh, Trevor Lawrence weapons. So the Gabe Davis contract was a little bit eye-popping, but he's a 25-year-old receiver. He's been productive in the league. And I think what people don't recognize with Davis is he does a lot away from the ball that helps other wide receivers with his speed and clearing out deep zones. So, he could be a really interesting fit and add some size to that wide receiving core. I've been really surprised how pan the Gabe Davis signing has been nationally. To me, Chad, that's got a lot of Christian Kirk vibes. People said the same thing about Kirk two years ago. No one's really talking about him now because they see how productive he is here in Jacksonville. Could Gabe Davis have a similar result? You know, I think so. And one of the ways they probably will utilize him is more of a condensed split than purely out wide all the time. And if you looked at him really in 2023 when he struggled with those two tight ends the Bills brought in with Kincaid and the other, they, they really pushed him out to the boundary, and he's running a lot of clear-out routes for the underneath guys. So 
he's a 25 year old player that's you know big physical he's had production in the league and you're right there the christian kirk the people knocked that contract and it worked out pretty well you can follow chad forbes on x at nfl draft bites he's with us here on 1010 xl in jacksonville eric armstead chad what could he do not only individually but certainly to help josh allen and trayvon walker Right. Well, he's just a big physical presence, interior pass rush. It makes your sub package, you know, pretty scary with those three guys. And he could play all over the defensive line and allow that new defensive coordinator to get a little bit more creative. And, you know, for years down in Jacksonville, we'd be screaming, then you'd edge depth. DeJuan Smoot didn't do it. Jason didn't do it. You've got three guys that can play on the edge, but also fit into the sub package. He's a great player. He's a winning guy. I really love the fit for Jackson, the one who brings that defensive line. You know, a way, way under the radar signing, we haven't really even talked about it, is this Travis Gibson. Now, he was in Nashville last year and was hurt uh, for most of the year. Didn't really do much. But in back-to-back years in Chicago, 21 and 22, he had 10 total sacks. I mean, that's light years ahead of where Caleb Von Chason was. Does Travis Gibson, you know, maybe uh, bring the Jaguars something that we're not thinking about right now? You always look at guys that you think could get extensions after you know, when the rookie contracts are coming up. And there was a new regime in Chicago. The, sh- the scheme shifted a little bit. But I thought he might be a guy that they'd give kind of a nice extension to. So he's a really interesting flyer. And you know, building the depth of the edge rush is really important because if you lose one of those guys, you've got to have someone to step up. That was an under-the-radar move that I also noticed. And uh, it could be it could p- play out pretty well. You know, you, what's interesting about the Darnell Savage uh, signing from Green Bay, we thought he was going to be the replacement for Rayshon Jenkins at the safety position. Doug Peterson down in Orlando last week says not so fast. He may be the nickel, and that's how they look at him as with Antonio Johnson being the replacement for Rayshon Jenkins. What do you think of having Savage as your nickel? You know, Savage played his best ball down the stretch for the Packers, and when you let him run and use his instincts, he runs into a lot of interceptions, so... He gives you some flexibility on the back end, and certainly in your big nickel, he could slide down into the slot. He can play too high. He can also play a little bit single high, so he's a really interesting, good fit. And it might not just be for this year, but down the line, he's a young player. You know, in a year, if you lose uh, Cisco, he could maybe be your free safety. So I thought they got him for pretty good value, and that, again, was another sign that got knocked by the media. Is Darius Williams uh, out, Ronald Darby in? Is that a push? What are your thoughts there? Uh, Darius Williams is a better player, but I like getting Darby for the two years. He has struggles, struggles staying healthy, but he's a veteran player that plays some really good ball for the Ravens down the stretch. So getting him on that cheap deal gives you – maybe he only pay, plays 11 or 12 games. So corner is going to be a big need heading into the draft, but I certainly like him opposite Tyson Campbell, but you certainly need to add a few more pieces to that cornerback group. And look, hopefully this guy doesn't play at all in the regular season unless it's in a blowout Jaguar win. But again, I guess nationally people just enjoy teeing off on the Jags. I had no problem giving a sixth-round pick for Mac Jones. We saw how important backup quarterbacks were throughout the league last year. To me, Mac Jones is an upgrade over C.J. Beathard. What was your thought on that one? Feels like the way the Eagles have functioned over the years, and Doug Peterson always spent time with that organization. You know, stock is definitely the lowest it'll be on Mac Jones, right? And I believe he's certainly a back a, a upgrade to C.J. Beathard. And Trevor Lawrence goes down for two or three games. You've got a guy that can win for you. He's done that in the league. I mean, people don't like to admit it, but he went to the Pro Bowl his rookie year. So, yeah, he, he's, he fell out of favor in New England. It was a tough situation up there. Sitting behind Trevor Lawrence could be really good for him. And you know Doug Peterson loves his backup quarterbacks. A couple of more for Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. And that does bring us to the draft. As far as Jacksonville goes, Chad, we mentioned wide receiver. We mentioned DB. I saw you last night tweeting out that you think Mitchell from Texas could potentially be a very good fit here for the Jags. Right. If they weren't willing to flip Zay Jones in that 17th pick for Brandon Ayuk and give him that big contract, then you know they're looking at wide receiver at 17. There's five guys that probably go in the top 20 picks. I don't think they're going to get in a range for you know Marvin Harrison Jr., Neighbors, Aroma Dunze. But one of Brian Thomas Jr. or Donnie Mitchell could be there at 17. That'd be a great fit. And then you also got to think they're going to look at the cornerbacks, whether it's Terry Arnold from Alabama. Don't see the Toledo quarterback, uh, Quignon Mitchell, getting to 17. And Nate Wiggins, it might be a little too early for him, although he does remind me in a lot of ways of Ronald Darby. So that might be an interesting fit, too. If Brian Thomas from LSU and Mitchell from Texas are both there at 17, how would you assess what the Jaguars would do? Who's the better player? Brian Thomas Jr. is the more the vertical guy with the big speed. He can run some in-breaking routes, but he's not as good of a route runner as a Donnie Mitchell. 
I personally think both those wide receivers are better than a Dunze, the wide receiver from Washington. They just haven't gotten a lot of, you know, buzz. It's like they're really good players. And Mitchell, you know, he's got some short area quickness for a big man. It's very rare. If he's there at 17, I'd sprint to the podium. Same question as far as the defensive back room. The thought is Terry and Arnold from Alabama might be gone. Quinion Mitchell, you mentioned from Toledo, might be gone. Those are likely to be the only two corners gone. McKinstry from Alabama, you mentioned Nate Wiggins, DeGene from Iowa. Who's your third corner in this class? Yeah, you know, DeGene and McKinstry might be more of inside nickels. McKinstry could play out wide. I think DeGene's a tough fit. If they don't hit corner at 17, whether it's Terry on Arnold or Quinion Mitchell, I don't see them being in on Mitchell. Just the way that that general manager's operated over the years, he certainly loves his big school guys. Then there's guys in round two that could start thinking about, like Enos Rakestraw, TJ Tampa from Iowa State, Max Melton from Rutgers tested off the charts. He might, might not get to 48. So what I think you see is if they go wide receiver at 17, they're going to start being calling teams to try to get up. For maybe it's, say, yeah, the Clemson corner, um, there's Nate Wiggins, or maybe maybe they do like McKinstry out wide. Who knows? But I think they're going to start to think about coming up from 48 to try to get the corner to answer that big big need. A couple of more for Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. As far as the Jaguars, wide receiver, DB, what I've heard, Chad, is that wide receiver might be a little deeper. You might be able to get a better player at 48, would that lead you to believe if those are their two biggest needs, maybe you would go corner at 17 thinking wide receiver value will still be very high in round two? You know, the corners that are going to be in round two, some of them have deficiencies, you know, smaller, can't run. But I look at it and say, if you can get a Donay Mitchell, he's just so much better than guys like Ricky Pearsall, Malachi Corley, uh, Devontae Walker, those type of guys you get at 48. They don't really excite me, and they feel like they'd be a little bit developmental. Where I think you bring in a Donay Mitchell, and you'd be surprised how quickly he comes in and is really the number one wide receiver. So he, I love the guy. I think that that's the way that they see the world. They'll be very in on Mitchell. And then round two, that's where you try to hit corner. Jared Verse, uh, that to me is a dream scenario. I see mock drafts that actually have him available at 17, which I can't believe. Uh, I thought he'd for sure be a top 10, certainly top 15 guy. Is there any chance versus there at 17? You know, I actually have Verse going 19 to the Rams, so two picks after the Jaguars Ooh. with you know, Jacksonville taking Mitchell. He's a good player, and it's interesting because if they did go edge rush at 17, it wouldn't surprise anybody, and that would seem to indicate to me that there's not going to be a long-term extension for Josh Allen. Now, if I'm in their shoes, I think I get Josh Allen paid because you know he's just a difference maker off the edge. And really, people have underrated the edge rush group in Jacksonville. That's formed quite an identity for their defense. So I'd get Josh Allen locked up, and I wouldn't really be looking at a pass rusher there at 17. Yeah, I, I agree. I just the value to me, Allen, Walker, Armstead, and Verse on the field together. Maybe you can move Walker inside in some situations like that. That to me is a really interesting scenario. But I agree. I think ultimately it will be wide receiver or DB. Chad, as we begin to wrap up, the AFC South, man, uh, let's start with the Titans. They had a billion dollars, and they basically spent it. Ridley, Cushenberry, Pollard, Sneed, how much, uh, you know, did they improve themselves, and could they be a contender in 2024? It feels a little bit like the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple years ago when they gave out all those big contracts. They had the money to spend. They didn't really have anybody on the roster that was worth giving extensions to. It's all going to come down to how good is Will Levis, and does this coach get him, you know, playing at a high level? They've certainly done enough to support him to this point, and they've got to look at the left tackle there at seven, and then I wouldn't be surprised if they hit another wide receiver at 38 with you know, Devondre Hopkins getting a little bit older. How do you think that's going to work with Ridley and Hopkins, two 30-year-old wide receivers? Yeah, I think Ridley's a better, quicker route runner. They do both feel like they work better in the slot. Ridley can play out wide, but it seems like you know what they gave Ridley, they got to run the offense through him. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw them trade New Hopkins to a team like Baltimore or Kansas City, maybe for a third-round pick come draft day, especially if they can get another wide receiver there at 38. And the tough scenario for them that nobody really discusses is if somebody trades up ahead of them to get Joe Alt, say, you know, the Saints or the Jets come into six with the Giants, do they consider a wide receiver there at seven and kind of think of themselves as being you know, the fastest show on turf? And Dunze might be there, an interesting pick. So 
Yeah, I, I can see the Titans going wide receiver also. That's interesting. Yeah, that they have Joe Alts like locked into the Titans on every mock draft, unless of course, like you said, somebody trades up quickly. Chad, Indianapolis really didn't bring anybody in, but they kept all their own guys. They get Anthony Richardson back. What's your thought on the Colts here in this off season? You know, Alex Pierce hasn't done it for them. They need another wide receiver off to Pittman. If Marvin Harrison Jr. somehow got to the Chargers at five, I mean, Jim Mercer is going to be trying to trade up for him. Other wide receivers there, you got a Donay Mitchell and Brian Thomas, and that might be the floor for Brock Bowers, the tight end from Georgia. And then, you know, second and third round, I think they're going to start to hit defensive back and defensive tackle. And the Texans, according to all indications nationally, won free agency with Daniil Hunter, Joe Mixon, Danico Autry, just to name a few. I mean, what's your thought on what Houston did? It's amazing how nailing a quarterback really expedites your timeline and you start to go after, you know, 29 year old edge rushers like Danielle Hunter and bring in veterans to you know, think maybe we can take the next step. I also liked what they did moving down from 23, kind of getting that extra second round pick. I can see them going wide receiver, defensive line. They don't really have any glaring needs after how aggressive they were in free agency. All right, Chad, final question. Do four quarterbacks go in the top five? Uh, no. So the McCarthy talk, because there is legit talk that he's a top five guy. Where do you think he ultimately goes? You know, everything you're hearing is that the Patriots don't love Drake Mayer McCarthy, and they might go wide receiver if Jaden Daniels isn't there, or they could trade down with the Vikings or the Broncos. But those two teams, the Vikings and Broncos, I, the Giants are not in on quarterbacks, no matter how much they try to push that narrative through the national media. So I think if you're the Vikings, you know, why give up all those picks to go to three? Why not sit and wait? And when Mayor McCarthy comes off the board, they've got all the draft capital to go up and get the next guy. And I think they've got those two guys closely ranked. So I see it going Caleb and Jaden. And then I somehow think the Patriots might go wide receiver. And we'll catch up after the draft, but just for the Jaguar fans, as we say goodbye, you just did a mock. You think, and I saw you last night say the same thing. You think it's 17. If it were you, their Jaguars are taking Mitchell from Texas. Uh, that that's the move I'd make. And, uh, you know, they did a lot to address that defense. I'm not a big draft corners early guy. They seem to bust to me a lot. You know, I, I'd get a donate Mitchell and say, you know, we got to score points and we got to make Trevor Lawrence into this franchise quarterback that we know he's capable of and, uh, getting him a big wide receiver to go with the current group and Ingram. I mean, that's a fun offense. Chad Forbes at NFL Draft Bites on social media. Chad, it's your time of year, brother. I know you're busy. Thank you, as always. We'll do it after the draft. It was fun. Duval. Feel the power when the horses run free. Are you kidding me? This Sunday at Martinsville, brought to you by the Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Local Union 234. Am I dreaming right now? On Jacksonville's NASCAR station, 1010XL. Hacker here for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. I started this journey with Awaken 180 pretty recently, right? February 20th was day one for me on the program. Here we are now, April 2nd. I've lost 40 pounds, man. 40 pounds from February 20th to April the 2nd. How have I done that? Well, with the good folks of Awaken 180 Weight Loss. My coach, Kate, we meet every week. We make a game plan. I follow the game plan, what to eat, what not to eat. And you do that, you listen to their tutelage, you will lose weight. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm down 40 in less than six weeks. Do yourself a favor. If it's time for you to shed some weight, go to awaken180weightloss.com or call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. Six weeks from now, this could be you who lost 40 pounds. Awaken 180 weight loss. Osprey fans, today is giving day at the University of North Florida. From athletics to scholarships, lend your support today. No gift is too small. Swoop and support the Ospreys. Visit givingday.unf.edu or call 904-620-1672. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation, light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience, so don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. Mueller Air Conditioning presents... Are you cool? 
Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice aroni? Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Electricians, innovators, and tech enthusiasts, listen up. Miller Electric is shaping the future, and we want you to be a part of it. From healthcare and data centers, corporate offices, aviation, and industrial facilities, Miller Electric is powering the most exciting projects in Jacksonville and beyond. We offer not just the job, but a thrilling career with great pay and incredible benefits. Visit us at MillerCareers.com to apply. Miller Electric, where your skills meet our vision and equal opportunity employer. 1010XL celebrates athletic and academic greatness. Listen for the High School Scholar Athlete Wednesdays on the Frangie Show. Brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. And the Plumbers and Pipefitters Local Union 234 on 1010XL. PRP treatment is kind of the thing these days. And in many cases, it eliminates the need for surgery. This is Sheridan Tootin. And my experience with PRP from Southeast Orthopedic Specialists has been nothing short of great. I'm really feeling much better now. Ask your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist doctor about PRP treatment. This is Dr. Kevin Murphy with Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, where athletes are treated like pros. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Pepto Bismol's there. Pepto Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. You know, people ask me all the time, Mia, why buy from Arlington Toyota? And when they do, here's what I tell them. Let's start with peace of mind. When you buy any new Toyota from Arlington, their lifetime warranty goes with you. That's unlimited time and miles. Plus, you get 30 days to love your pre-owned purchase or exchange it for one that you do. And you even get a complimentary car wash with your service visit. Now you know why you should buy from Arlington. 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com. E.T. here, and it's time for the Taste of Golf at TPC Sawgrass, April 24th. Join me for fine cuisine from chefs from the top golf clubs in our area, craft cocktails, games, and unique auction items. This is one of the most charitable events in our area. Come network with a sophisticated audience who is passionate about golf and its value, all while impacting the youth in our community. All proceeds benefit First Team North Florida. For tickets, go to tasteofgolf.com. Come on, somebody. Hey, Hicken here, or just call me Danny Dreamfinders. For a limited time, on select move and ready homes, Dreamfinders Homes is offering an amazing 3.99% interest rate in year one of your mortgage. Now is your chance to lock down the rate. You heard me right, 3.99% offer in year one. Visit dreamfindershomes.com for sales event information and get the game. Interest rate available on select move and ready homes. Restrictions and limitations apply. Go to dreamfindershomes.com for more details. Lauren Brooks here from Mayport CNC Fisheries. Growing up at the beach, I know good shrimp and oysters when I see them. They're local and they're fresh. That's why Mayport CNC Fisheries is my go-to for both. They have local shrimp in stock seven days a week. Eat like a local at Mayport CNC Fisheries. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. After Dark on 1010XL. With you till 10 o'clock every night of the week now, Monday through Friday, 1010XL, 92.5 FM. I assume most of you probably know this by now in the event that you do not, if you're driving home right now or if you're in the comfort 
of your own home. You can always listen to us on the radio, obviously, the app as well. But we stream the show, YouTube, X slash Twitter, Facebook. It's all over the place every night, Monday through Friday. Every show on 1010XL is streamed on all the social media platforms. Uh, it's very easy to find us. Just search 1010XL, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc., and you will see the shows there streaming live, including right here on Hacker After Dark. Thank you to Chad Forbes for joining us. Adonai Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell from Texas, is his guy for the Jaguars at 17. You know, we talk so much about Brian Thomas, the wide receiver from LSU. A.D. Mitchell, you talk to some people, they think Brian Thomas and Mitchell are six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Um, I've seen, in fact, I don't think I've seen a mock that did not have Mitchell available at 17. Some of the mocks I've seen have both Thomas and Mitchell. A few mocks had Brian Thomas going before 17. But that is a legit question. If Jacksonville does intend to go wide receiver, which is plausible, right, and Brian Thomas of LSU is there and A.D. Mitchell of Texas is there, who would they go with? And for those of you not familiar with Mitchell, 6'2", 205, from Texas. He's a big guy. Um, Pretty fast. His NFL player comp, I always like doing player comps this time of year on NFL.com. His player comp is George Pickens from Pittsburgh. I just don't know as much about him as I do Brian Thomas. But what I do know in talking, look, if you go back to when the season ended, in case you're counting Denmark, that was 86 days ago. I always thought it was 87. Yeah, 86 since the season ended. So in the last 86 days, we've had a lot of draft guys on. And we will continue to have a lot of draft guys on for the next 23 days leading up to the NFL draft on Thursday night, April the 25th. And in talking to a lot of these guys, one thing that becomes very apparent very quickly is the wide receiver is deeper than corner you can hypothetically wait and get a wide receiver at 48 in the second round if your need at corner, if a Quinion Mitchell or somebody falls. I mean, if Quinion Mitchell is there and Brian Thomas is there, who are you going to go with? Do you take the number one corner on your board? Yes. I would agree with that. I I guess, again, I think right now the wide receiver room for the Jaguars, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis – Zay Jones, if you want to lump Evan Ingram in there as well, I think that is certainly stronger than the DB room, which currently consists of Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby, and Darnell Savage. So I'm leaning corner at 17. Now the question is, all right, if Mitchell from Toledo is gone, Arnold from Alabama is gone, the top two corners, then at that point, do you go Nate Wiggins from Clemson McKinstry from Alabama, do you go the third corner if Brian Thomas or A.D. Mitchell, those wide receivers, might be a tad or two higher on your draft board? But again, you can, by all accounts, you can find wide receivers that are going to be good players in the future in round two this year. This is one of the deeper wide receiver drafts the National Football League has had in some time. I mean, Denmark, if the top two corners are gone, and let's say the number three corner on your board is Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama, but both Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell, those two wide receivers are there, what do you do? If the top three receivers are off the board, which is Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, and Malik Neighbors are off the board. Which they will be. Yeah, I don't. I do not want to take a receiver at 17 because the value is just not there. You're relying on a bunch of guys – mostly that only had one productive year in college. And you can take a little bit, just as much of a guy as they are in the second round of Ricky Pearsall. Well, that's the thing, all right? Now, and that's the question. And Ricky Pearsall is a good example because he's a local guy. Keon Coleman as well, although I doubt Coleman would fall to 48. He might. He's fallen out of the first round in some mocks I've seen. But I don't know if he's going to get as low as 48. But let's take Ricky Pearsall. If you take Kool-Aid McKinstry and Ricky Pearsall or you take Brian Thomas and let's say Max Melton out of Rutgers, 
Ryan Thomas, wide receiver, round one. Max Melton, corner in round two. Or do you flip that and do you take McKinstry, the corner out of Alabama, in round one and go wide receiver in round two with Pearsall? I like your line of thinking, and I agree with it, because wide receiver is deeper by all indications. I'm going to take corner in round one where it may not be as deep, and I'm going to wait and get my wide receiver round two. And because we've spent now a good four or five minutes on this, inevitably the Jaguars are going to draft an offensive tackle at 17. Or it's a what D-tackle. they do. Or a D tackle. Or Jared Verse. I mean, Chad Forbes had Verse available at 17. You think he's going to fall? Uh, look, I said this last night. I don't think he's going to be there at 17. And that's why I'm borderline shocked for every five mock drafts that you look at. You know, regardless of the website, ESPN, Pro Football Focus, CBS, wh- wherever website you want to go, for every five mock drafts you look at, Verse falls past 17 and probably two of them, about 40% of the ones that I've seen. Now, he doesn't go much past 17. Uh, I've seen him go 19 a bunch. I've seen him go in the early 20s a bunch. I've actually seen him go to Seattle at 16 a bunch. That would suck, going right before Jacksonville. Because, man, I got to tell you, I know they have needs of wide out, and I know they have needs of DB. But, brother, if Jared Verse is there at 17, and you could have Jared Verse, Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, and Eric Armstead, mm, 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 mm. I would think about it. I would think about it long and hard. There is no question about that. Speaking of Jared Verse, I wanted to get this thought in. Florida State, obviously, Jared Verse played there very successfully there for the last two years in Tallahassee. They are going through spring football over in the state capitol. The Garnet and Gold game is scheduled for two weeks from Saturday, Saturday, April the 20th. They're at Doak S. Campbell Stadium. And Mike Norvell was meeting with, I believe it's 24-7 Sports today, And they asked him flat out, the head coach of Florida State, brand new contract extension this offseason. Norvell was asked about the response his team has had this spring to being left out of the college football playoff three months ago. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was obviously an extremely challenging time. Uh, You know, that was a. Uh, something that was hard on our team, uh, you know, hard on the, on the, on the players, you know, just everybody that was involved in it. Um, you know, obviously our fan base, I mean, uh, to, to see the things that our, our, our group was able to accomplish last year and to, uh, to be able to go and, um, you know, even respond to the adversity that the season threw at us and uh, to be able to win, to win the conference championship going 13 and oh, uh, all those things. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, not, not a control of, uh, of necessarily the the opportunity to play in the playoffs and um, you know being able to uh, kind of handle and, and manage our guys throughout the uh, throughout that that bowl season and you know some guys that that opted to uh, uh, to not play in the bowl game as they prepared for the uh, for the combine and uh, you know obviously uh, you know their NFL futures I mean it was just it was a it was a challenging time you know let me tell you how irrelevant bowl games are. Again, it was only three months ago the Orange Bowl was played. I've, like, erased that from my mind. I don't even care. That Florida State team last year to me was 13-0. The Florida State Seminoles were 13-0. That team that played in Miami against Georgia that lost whatever it was, 150 to nothing, that was not the Florida State Seminoles in 2023. That was the junior varsity team. That was the middle school team. The actual Seminoles, the actual football team, to me, I'm going to remember as undefeated. And they were undefeated because they had a ton of talent. But unfortunately, you know, that circle of life, right? Florida State's got to replace talent. We mentioned Jared Verse, Keon Coleman, uh, Johnny Wilson, Jordan Travis, Trey Benson, Braden Fisk. I mean, just go on down the line. The amount of guys, I believe it's 18 contributors on that team last year or either into the draft or went into the portal, and Mike Norvell was asked about having to replace all that NFL talent this upcoming season. 
Last year we had 25, you know, all conference players. Uh, you know, it was a really special group, you know, and, and half of those guys were, were high school players that had been here and kind of grown and developed. And those guys, I believe, are going to take another step. And yes, you know, we, we had some some great players that uh, that are, are transitioning going to the NFL draft. And uh, but I really am I'm very confident in what this team is and how it's been how it's been brought together and you know ultimately what they can do. Norvell did a great job in the portal again. Maybe not as good as in years past. But I still think he brought in a lot of talent in the transfer portal, and we'll see. I mean, we'll obviously dive more into Florida State as we get further into the summer. we got the Garnet and Gold game coming up April 20th. They kick off the college football season, right, in Dublin, Ireland. Georgia Tech, Florida State, Ireland on Saturday, August the 24th as one of the first games of the new college football season. We're at halftime on Hacker After Dark. One hour down, one hour to go. We will take you up until 10 o'clock here on a Tuesday. Coming up next, my buddy Mark Wise of ESPN. The man is a college basketball encyclopedia. He has forgotten more about college basketball than I'll ever know. And Mark Wise, once upon a time, four plus decades ago, was a graduate assistant, a GA, at one of the four schools that will be playing in the Final Four on Saturday. I'll let him tell you that story. It's an interesting story. I think you'll find it very interesting. We'll also talk Riley Kugel of Florida announcing his intentions to head into the transfer portal. It's a Tuesday night in Jacksonville. Let's talk with Mark Wise. Final Four talk next on Hacker After Dark. He's big. What kind of monster are you? And he's big on the jazz. Three times bigger than this. Mike Dempsey. What do you think? Well, what do you know? 10 to noon weekdays. A lot smarter than I look. On 1010XL. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1990s. By calling... 260 Crab, Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Warm weather means the beach, fishing, golf, and more. Make sure to drop into Dales and grab a cold case to go. From Bud Light to their seltzer, from Mick Ultra to Modelo, or your favorite crabs like Old City or Sweetwater. Grab and go at your local Dales. I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, the only costs are the books and the course fees, about $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to etajax.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. The flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. It's the Guggen Open. Let's play some golf. Listen to the drill for your chance to play in this year's Coastal Equipment Guggen Open. Hey, so where do we tee off? April 15th at Hidden Hills Golf Club. Four. Breakfast provided by Chick-fil-A. Enjoy a box lunch from Dandy Foods. Pick up a cigar from Tobacco Co. You can do this? Win great prizes on the course from Edwin Watts Golf. Thanks to our sponsors. Andy's Automotive. CSS Outdoor. The Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Union 234. Royal Pest Control. And Injury Care Centers. Have you tried golfing at the Improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Cap House. Now, go to the website, that is CimarronGolfClub.com, and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program, and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. Discover the difference that local expertise makes at First Coast Lighting and Fans. Visit their showroom at the Avenues and browse high-quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness at First Coast Lighting and Fans. 
She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Biana's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Time now for a medical recap. A health and wellness tip from Jaguars head team physician, Dr. Kevin Kaplan. Rotator cuff tears are the most common overhead injuries I see. In order to avoid shoulder issues, make sure not to overload the front of the shoulder while also focusing on developing good scapular strength and maintaining flexibility in your lats. Proper hydration, nutrition, and supplementation are also crucial to joint and muscle health. Go Jack. XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010 XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. We have gone from 68 down to four. Yukon, Alabama, Purdue, and North Carolina State will converge out in Phoenix, Arizona, as the Final Four gets underway on Saturday. With that, let's go to a man that, as I often say, has forgotten more about college basketball than I'll ever know. My friend Mark Wise has been with us all tournament long as we break down the Final Four coming up this weekend. Mark, how we doing? Ryan, I'm doing great, man. It's uh, uh, Here's with the where, where I am today. Um, I am so looking forward to more action tonight in the women's tournament that I haven't had time to catch my breath from the weekend. It's been a good tournament. There's been a lot of great stories. There's no question about that. And let's begin with, I guess, the local team in our area, that being the last SEC team left, Mark, in Alabama. Your work yeah. with ESPN and the SEC Network, you saw a bunch of SEC schools. If I were to tell you a month ago, that Alabama would be the last one standing, what would you have said? Uh, I would have been surprised because of their lack of, uh, of defense. But now, remember, I also said, even though I didn't have a high level of trust, uh, I really liked their draw. And I thought they could get to the Sweet 16, but did I see them beating uh, North Carolina in some combination of Clemson, Baylor, Arizona? No, I did not see that. But guess what? When you make, I think they made 11 threes against Carolina and they made 16 against Clemson. When you shoot the ball that well, it overshadows whatever defensive weaknesses you might have. And remember, by Nate Oates' own admission in his postgame uh, interviews, he said, hey, we, for whatever reason, we played better defense in the four NCAA games than we did all season long. So more power to them. It's not that I think they're locked down. I just think they have gotten some key stops at key moments. College basketball can be a funny thing. Florida played these guys three times. You could argue they should have won all three. They boat raced them in two of them, and the other one, Alabama, had to come storming back in Tuscaloosa. What is different about the Crimson Tide now than, say, a month, month and a half ago? Well, the, the impressive thing is that they've had different other guys step up, whether it's Stevenson making threes in that regional final against Clemson. How about the, the game that Grant Nelson had, who almost single-handedly beat North Carolina down the stretch? So uh, they haven't had to rely on Mark Sears getting 30 in order for them to win the way Tennessee has to rely on Dalton Connect to get 30. Uh, and because of that, I think it's even kind of freed up Sears and it's given him some better looks and the better looks means he's knocking down shots and, and he's elevated his game. There's no question to it. He, he's a different player in the NCAA tournament than even he was in the regular season. And in a lot of years, his regular season was good enough to be SEC player of the year, except for Dalton Connect and what he did. Does Alabama making it to the Final Four, Mark, maybe salvage what was overall a pretty bad tournament for the SEC? Well, I, again, I think we put too much stock in wins and losses in the NCAA tournament. I get it. It's the measuring stick. It's, the, it's the, both the beauty and the curse of the tournament. 
but are we going to say that, uh, um, you know, other leagues weren't as good that the, the big 10, because, uh, you know, it was Purdue and everybody else, or, uh, I, I just, I hate that we have to use that moniker as, as the, uh, uh, bar, if you will, but if you have to do it, then absolutely. I mean, I, I, aren't they the first SEC team in the final four since 2019, I think. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the league. It's a good thing for Alabama getting their very first done, uh, first one. And they've done it in a way that's a little bit different. Mark Wise of ESPN here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. The good thing for Alabama, they're going to the Final Four. The bad <laughs> thing for Alabama, Mark, is they're yeah. going to play a machine. I mean, look, UConn, uh, brother, they are. Now, granted, they've, you know, their draw is what it was, right? I don't know if they've, they, I don't know if they've seen a team like Alabama. I'll grant you that, but they have destroyed essentially four teams in a row to get to this point. But do you remember when everybody two weeks ago was saying it wasn't fair the draw that UConn had, how tough it was with all the conference winners, and Iowa State was underseeded and and blah blah blah. You can only play the once the tournament comes out. You can only play the games in front of you. I mean, do do we think that? Um, and, and I'll use NC State. Do you think NC State would have beat Houston if if Jamal Shedd hadn't gotten beat for Houston? So. There's no excuses. I mean, you just line up and play your next opponent and more power to you. Not even the 06, 07 Florida teams that won back-to-back titles waxed people in the two tournaments the way UConn is doing. What I like about them, yeah, they got the NBA talent that you have to have, but they've got a coach who's on edge most of the time. He gets his players to play on edge. They play with a real – I want to say they're almost void of an emotional letdown because of that edge that they play with. And, and they've been impressive. Uh, I, I took them at the, at the beginning. I, I tried to find an eight to one, a 10 to one shot. I don't see it. I still think it's the chalk. Are we talking historic, you know, team for UConn? If they do cap off a back to back, they'd be the first team since Florida to do it. But as you said, I mean, how dominating they have been, Will this be a UConn team that you put against maybe some of the better teams of all time? Absolutely. Without question. I mean, there are only, what, seven back-to-back winners in NCAA history. Uh, and, and and UCLA, of course, has the 29 in a row or whatever they won. But um, absolutely, without question. And they've done it with, you know, Florida did it with basically the same lineup. I mean, they're doing it with some real changes to the lineup. Now, the big guy makes a big difference. Uh, I get that. Um, but I, I, I think when you start, if they go ahead and pull this off, Phoenix this weekend, then I think without question, they have to be in that conversation. Mark Wise of ESPN here with us previewing the Final Four on 1010XL. North Carolina State, it was about, what, a couple of weeks ago, that they were, I think, a double-digit seed in their own conference tournament. And right. since then, they've rattled off, what, eight in a row to get to where they are right now, heading to the Final Four. You know what almost reminds me of, Mark? And I'm curious your thoughts. UConn did this with, I believe, Kemba Walker, right? They had to win the Big right. East tournament just right. to get in. Yeah, and then five that, games in five days. Right, right, exactly. And that propelled them to a national title. Look, I don't know if NC State will cap it off, but it kind of has similarities to that UConn team. I don't think there's any question about it. You, you know, you go back to the, I think it was the semifinals of the ACC tournament where Virginia was up three and had fouls to give. They did not give them. McDonald uh, knocks down the three-pointer. NC State uh, won that game in overtime, went on, won the tournament. That's the only way they were getting in the NCAA tournament. And and they're another team, and I'm not belittling what NC State has done. That has been fabulous. But, you know, the second round, instead of playing Kentucky, they played Oakland. And so they caught a break there in terms of, of moving on. But that's not their issue. Um, I, it's a team that has – here's the one thing that I've been really impressed with. I know they only play seven people, and I know that O'Connell and, and Horn play a lot of minutes. But, man, does he get the most out of Middlebrooks and Taylor coming off the bench so that those other guys, like DR only played 23 minutes the other day. Burns plays 29 minutes. They do a good job getting in in and out of games uh, as his foul situation dictates. 
So they've done a masterful job in terms of rotating that seven man rotation. And they've just, they're playing like a team of destiny. They're playing with a lot of confidence. And when you play with a lot of confidence this time of year and you're making shots and that's what the name of the game is. You've heard me say that before, forget that defending and rebounding, man. make shots. And, and every team that's in the final four shot a higher percentage than their opponent. You're a college. So again, you, yeah, yeah go, you go can ahead. talk to me all you want about defending and rebounding. Man, you got to make shots. You're a college basketball encyclopedia. I mean, Burns of NC State, did you see this coming? I mean, that guy has been sensational. No, he's been good all year. He's just taken it like the team to a different level. And I think, you know, a lot of times what happens with a team like this, they, they kind of I want to say kind of fumble their way through rotations, fumble their way through um, schemes and systems and who gets to shoot when and where. And it almost looks like it after the winning the ACC tournament that all that has clicked in and, and they understand who needs to get the most shots, who needs to get the most threes, and they benefited because of it. Mark Wise of ESPN. That gets me to Purdue, and you have some historical significance when it comes to Purdue. For the first time in almost four and a half decades, they're returning to the Final Four. And Zach Eady, uh, the guy is a force of nature under there. Tennessee could do nothing. Now, volunteer fans will tell you that that guy <laughs> lived in the paint. He never gets called for a foul. Uh, he can hit you with a sledgehammer. Nothing's going to happen to him. You rub a fingernail on him on the opposite side, and it's a foul call. Tennessee fans were awfully fired up. But just your thoughts on Purdue and Matt Painter finally getting over the top and going to a Final Four. Well, let me talk about Zach Eady first. If you went back, if you and I watched the film, every time Eady comes down the floor at about the free throw line, he starts getting fouled. So I don't want to hear about um, Edie and, and, and being, being uh, uh, getting the advantage in terms of who should get more fouls called on him. As a matter of fact, Awaka fouled out. I think he played 10 minutes and played and had five fouls, and he probably committed 19 other <laughs> fouls. The, the other part of that is you, you've watched college basketball this year. How many three second violations have you seen called? Uh, not a lot. Yeah. How about zero? So it's just not a call that's being made in, in, in this day and age of college basketball. Uh, from a historical perspective, yeah, because <clears throat> the last time Purdue was in the Final Four, I was fortunate enough to be a, a young guy on the staff. I, Jeff Meyer and I were the two guys that fit about eight or nine um, uh, descriptions today in terms of the student assistants, the grad assistants, the video coordinator, the player development, the assistant to the head coach. Heck, we were the head coffee getters. So, yeah, if you look this week, you'll, you, if you squint real hard, you might see me. Now, I don't look a lot like I did back then uh, on that Purdue bench. So, uh, if we go back a year before 1980, the tournament expanded uh, Hacker to 40 that year, that they had a rule that only two teams from a conference could go to the NCAA tournament. Wow. And because Wes Matthews from Wisconsin hit a midcourt shot to beat Magic Johnson in Michigan State that year on the very last day of the regular season, <clears throat> there was a three-way tie in the Big Ten race between um, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Purdue. Well, because of the tiebreakers, we were the short man, and we were not allowed to go to the NCAA tournament, went to the NIT, where we lost to uh, this freshman at Indiana had, uh, I, oh yeah, his name was Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Now our our paths were going to cross again, but we we did lose in the NIT finals. A year later, <clears throat> the NCAA changed to 48 teams, and they put in what's called the Purdue rule, where <clears throat> now there was no limit on the number of teams a conference could put in the tournament. And as a sixth seed in that tournament. We actually got to play the first two rounds at home, which was completely unfair. Uh, we played LaSalle, beat LaSalle, then beat St. John's. Louis Kyrnseka brought his team in. We beat them at Mackey Arena. Now, imagine in this day and age the uproar that you would find. Uh, it's, it's the debate that's going on in the women's tournament right now. 
But that sent us to the regional, and then the regional in Lexington, in a much younger Rupp Arena, uh, we our paths crossed. Uh, um, our paths crossed paths. I say our ways crossed paths with Indiana again, and this time we waxed Indiana in the semifinals. By the way, Isaiah and IE would go on to win the NCAA the following year. And then the regional finals, we beat Duke. So we won the regional for Purdue. Last time Purdue was in the final four in Rupp Arena against Duke. That was uh, Gene Banks, Mike Jeminski, that team. And then we had the misfortune of going in uh, and playing. And you, you have this sexy kind of attitude about going to the final four. Well, for Purdue that year, it just happened to be in Indianapolis. So we had a sexy 60 mile bus ride to get to the final four, played in old Market Square Arena and lost to UCLA, played uphill the entire game. Finally got Joe Barry Carroll a little hook shot to tie the score with about 90 seconds to go. No shot clock back then, so it didn't go. We ended up having to foul. And I think we lost by five and then UCLA lost to Louisville uh, in the championship game. So that's a little historical perspective of, of the pain that the Purdue nation and that Matt Painter, I mean, he's been beyond fabulous in terms of owning what has happened to them over the last three or four years and losing to all these double digit seeds. And um, I think you saw the relief, the joy, uh, but maybe even more relief, even, even Zach Eady's kind of profanity interview, laden interview uh, post game maybe speaks to the volumes of the pressure that I think Purdue has played with in this NCAA tournament. Final moments, Mark Wise, ESPN. Yeah, Matt Painter's been there forever. I remember the second Gator team played uh, Purdue in the second round of the round of 32, and Painter was there, and I actually was there uh, for 1010XL in New Orleans, and Matt Painter's family was sitting behind me, and that was 16 right. years ago. I mean, Painter has been there in West Lafayette for a long, long time. Quickly, Mark, because I want to end with Riley Kugel. Uh, Burns versus Edie, I mean, the irresistible force against the immovable <laughs> yeah. object. What do you yeah. think, NC State, Purdue, and then what do you think, UConn, Alabama? Uh, I'm not going to change now. I've had chalk the whole way. I think it's UConn and Purdue. I think a week from tonight uh, will be a fabulous, fabulous matchup. And so I, I think those two favorites are going to win. And if UConn and Purdue get together on next Monday night, who do you have winning the national title? Oh, my gosh. Again, um, I, UConn's just too good, man. They can beat you in more ways than any other team. They can win a game in the 60s. They can win a game in the 90s. Uh, they can withstand foul, tr foul trouble. Uh, they're balanced. Uh, offensively, they run really creative stuff uh, in terms of trying to guard them. So, I know it's not flashy, but I'm sticking with UConn. And, again, if UConn were to win, they would be the first repeat champion since the Gators back in 07 and 08. Mark, final question. Thinking or Speaking of the Gators, rather, Riley Kugel, no big surprise, entered the portal, came out with his four teams that he's looking at, and it was like Arizona, UConn, right. Kansas. I mean, the best of the best. And I got Gator fans texting me like, we can't get this guy on the floor, and these are the teams he's looking at. Well, I right. said, well, who are you going to take off the floor this year? Zion Pullen, yeah, Walter Clayton, exactly. Will Richard. Kugel, <laughs> to me, is the fourth of those four. I don't blame Florida for right. playing those three above him. Yeah, he almost, uh, you know, he played his way into a star role at the way he finished a season ago and then kind of played his way to the six-man role this year. Uh, you know, I, 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 with almost with very few exceptions, I think we're all replaceable. And I think Riley Kugel's replaceable. He is a great athlete. And if his basketball skills catch up to his athleticism, he'll be in the NBA. But he's got a ways to go. He's a streaky shooter. His ball handling is suspect at best. But, man, can he go get it and play above, a rim, uh, above the rim for a guy his size. So, um, again, the, the, this is no different than any – like Michi Johnson at South Carolina, their leading scorer in the portal. And you can go – I can go up and down any – you know, a dude Thierro for Kentucky in the portal. Um, it's just the, the – I, I wish it were different, but it is the system that we're in right now. Mark Wise of ESPN. He's been so gracious with his time over the last couple of weeks talking tournament with us. 
Mark, let's enjoy the Final Four and the National Championship game. Hopefully we can get you on one last time early next week and recap what we hope is a terrific Final Four. Thank you so much, my friend. All right, thanks. Now hear this. Here's 1010XL's new life. We are sending you back to the future. Buckle up. Dan and Jeff in the morning. Mike and Tony 10 to noon. Mia, Lauren, and Taylor noon to 2. Joe, Matt, and Leon 2 to 4. Frank and Hayes 4 to 6. And Rick and Hacker in the evening. We invite you now to listen. Balu here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high-quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship-trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit smunezvision.com today. Here you can see. When you get nachos, tacos, empanadas, spicy queso with jalapenos, Pepto-Bismol's there. Pepto-Bismol provides fast, effective relief from nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. All the things that can happen unexpectedly on vacation. So before you travel, pack the Pepto. Pepto Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. At Duck, Duck Rooter, we understand plumbing issues can be a real inconvenience for your building or business, and we're here to help. We can handle all kinds of plumbing jobs, including broken pipes, clogged drains, line jetting, installing water heaters, and full repipes. Need a camera inspection or a smoke test? Yes, Duck, Duck Rooter does that too. Plus, our lift station services include inspections, monitoring, cleaning, and repairs. When you're stuck, call the Duck. 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loans, no personal loans. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. The station with the best Jaguars coverage, 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Are you tired of having a plain and boring backyard? Really want to impress your family and friends this year? Then stop by Stone Core on Phillips Highway. Imagine hosting guests at your new outdoor kitchen, relaxing by your custom-built fireplace under a brand-new pergola. Stone Core can also remodel your old pool deck and beautiful new pavers. Make your backyard wishes a reality. Visit Stone Core on Phillips Highway and let's get started. At StoneCore.co, we do outdoors better. I'm with Greg from Cycles of Jacksonville and Triumph is such a beautiful ride. But Greg, you're telling me that there's a price point that's going to invite even more potential buyers. There is. There's two new models, both of them under six grand, one of them under five grand. Great motorcycle, same Triumph quality design. You got to come see it. And it stills that big bike underneath you. It is. It's a good looking bike and all Triumph. You can log on cyclesofjacksonville.com or visit the showroom on Atlantic near Regency. ET here, and it's time for the Taste of Golf at TPC Sawgrass, April 24th. Join me for fine cuisine from chefs from the top golf clubs in our area, craft cocktails, games, and unique auction items. This is one of the most charitable events in our area. Come network with a sophisticated audience who is passionate about golf and its values, all while impacting the youth in our community. All proceeds benefit First Team North Florida. For tickets, go to tasteofgolf.com. Come on, somebody. Hello, First Coast. I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. 
Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL Green for Life. Hey, sports fans, it's Ace Carline for Kingfish Pest Control. Are mosquitoes turning your outdoor fun into a full-contact sport? Time to call in Kingfish Pest Control. I can tell you from my own experience, they are the MVPs of mosquito elimination. See for yourself. Call Kingfish Pest Control today and get an unbeatable 50% off your first treatment. That's right. Sign up for a full season of lockdown coverage and get 50% off your first treatment. Don't let mosquitoes steal your home field advantage. Reclaim your yard with Kingfish Pest Control. Instant Key. Instant Keys saves the day if you have lost or broken keys. They can program new keys and remotes for nearly every make and model of vehicle at a fraction of the dealership cost. Fast, honest, and reliable locksmith service. Call 722-1111. Instant Keys. Instant Keys. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant Keys comes to you. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. So how about this? On Tuesday, April the 2nd, that would be today, the Washington Commanders, the Los Angeles Chargers, and the Atlanta Falcons. Again, Atlanta, Washington, and L.A. All reported back to work today for off-season workouts. That was quick. 86 days after the regular season ended, because those teams have new head coaches, they had the option of reporting two weeks ahead of everybody else. The other teams with first-year head coaches are choosing next week, but no. There's a Twitter video going around. Adam Schefter retweeted it. <clears throat> Raheem Morris in Atlanta having his first team meeting today with the Falcons. They're back to work. They're in there doing team meetings. Again, Atlanta, the commanders. Remember Atlanta, Raheem Morris, the commanders, Dan Quinn, and, of course, the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh, the first three teams to report for offseason workouts. The Jaguars come back in 13 days. On Monday, April the 15th is when the Jaguars will be back at work. All the new free agents will arrive. We'll probably have some new jersey numbers by then. If you're a jersey number guy like I am, we're waiting to see, you know, what jersey numbers are going to be. Mitch Morris, Gabe Davis, etc. So that'll be 13 days from today. What's going on right now in college football is spring action. Gainesville, Tallahassee, Florida, Florida State. Spring ball, orange and blue game a week from Saturday down in Gainesville. Let's talk Florida, Florida State, and more with Brent Beard. You see him on First Coast News. You get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. On a Tuesday night in Jacksonville, Florida, talking college spring ball. Next, 1010XL and 92.5 FM. This is the playmaker and three-time Super Bowl champion, Michael Irvin. And you are listening to 1010XL, Jacksonville Sports Superstation. Hacker here. You know, there was a time when negative comments on social media about my weight just faded into the background. I got so used to seeing them. However, in just five weeks, everything has taken a 180. I now notice comments about my weight again because they're completely different. Thanks to dropping a whopping 40 pounds already with Awaken 180. People are noticing, noticing and rooting me on. It feels absolutely incredible. I'm diving back into clothes I haven't worn in 15 years, turning back time while losing five pounds a week thanks to Awaken 180 weight loss. I have a whole new outlook on life. I've been down other weight loss roads before, but nothing compares to this. The shift from not noticing the negative to embracing the positive has been profound. So what are you waiting for? Join me on this transformation with Awaken 180. Call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800 or online at awaken180weightloss.com. The 2024 draft is almost here. The Jaguars are now on the clock. Join us at Everbank Stadium Thursday, April 25th for the official Duval Draft Party presented by Donovan Air Electric and Plumbing. (laughs) 
Be there as the Jaguars make the 17th overall pick and don't miss the unveiling of the official 30th season logo that you voted on. We're getting the party started at 7 p.m. Tickets are free, so register today at jaguars.com slash draft party. We can't wait to see you there. The Jacksonville Jaguars select... Baloo for Shenatri Chiropractic. They've helped me get rid of my headaches and pain in my neck and back. Are you suffering from an auto accident? What about TMJ pain? Headaches associated with jaw clenching, grinding of the teeth, or stress-related disorders? Shenatri Chiropractic has a physical therapist on staff for rehabilitation, quality chiropractic care, dry needling massage, and acupuncture. Call 743-6700. Or go to ShanatriDC.com. It's the Guggen Open. I gotta learn how to play golf. For a chance for you and a partner to play in this year's Coastal Equipment Guggen Golf Open, April 15th at Hidden Hills Golf Club. Listen to Dan and Jeff on the drill. Enjoy a Chick fil A breakfast and a Dandy Foods lunch. Put the ball in a hole. Score a hole in one, and you could win $500 cash from Lucas Honda. Yeah! You could also win a Bernie Grill from Stone Core. Pictures from Jack Sports Photography. Thanks to our sponsors, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. Uh, Head and Ackerman Urology. Catch the Jacksonville Jaguars every day. Jaguars today from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. With Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony talking teal every weekday from 10 to noon. Jaguars today on 1010XL. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist. Waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Here's your 1010XL community calendar of local events and nonprofit groups helping people here at home. You could work for the Jaguars this season. They're hoping to fill over a 1,000 part-time positions. Attend their job fair Wednesday afternoon at Everbank Stadium. Learn more at jaguars.com. Builders Care is looking for volunteers, and there are so many ways you can help. Find out how at builderscare.org. If you'd like to play in the Northeast Florida Cornhole Tournament at Wingate Park May 18th, register at tsunami10u at mail.com. It benefits Tsunami Fast Pitch Softball. City Rescue Mission provides life-changing support for the homeless. Find ways to get involved at crmjacks.org. Hope Haven believes in children and youth with special needs and abilities and has developed programs to help ensure their success. Find out more about their employment services and internship program at hope-haven.org. You can find out how to share your community event at 1010XL.com. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Biana's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. This is your Mad Dad's update with Chapter President Donald Ford. Mad Dad's is asking for good, committed men who want to be part of an organization that has been around for 17 years. We are a group that is part of the solution, not the problem. We are a group that don't stand around murmuring and complaining, but get into action and hit the streets to get the community to break the code of silence to remove the murderers off our streets. We do not require a lot of time just willing and able bodies to get involved. We've had far too many murders this year already not to get involved. If you want to be part of this great organization, call 904-718-1649. We're looking for men, not men acting like boys. Hit me on Facebook and tell me what you think. For information about Mad Dad, go to Mad Dad Jacksonville Chapter Facebook or MattDadJacksonville.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. It is a Tuesday evening, and we are glad you are with us. We have a final four. 
in the world of college basketball, which includes maybe a surprise from the Southeastern Conference, and we had scrimmages. That's a big word this time of year. We had scrimmages in Tallahassee and in Gainesville, and in fact, the Orange and Blue game is a week from Saturday, if you can believe that. Let's talk about all of it with my buddy Brent Beard. You see him locally on First Coast News, and you get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Mr. Beard, how are you, my friend? Well, it's a fascinating time of year uh, with the Final Four that's coming up. And then, um, as a matter of fact, we have our first um, spring game on Saturday, Auburn uh, has their spring game hack. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, uh, there will be several uh, the following week. Um, uh, Alabama will be on ESPN. Florida will have theirs. Florida State uh, has theirs on the 20th. So we've still got a little bit of time for that. but And we'll certainly preview and review those games as it goes along. But it, it's a... Uh, it's a great time of year where all these things kind of intersect. Well, it's a great time of year if you have the Crimson Tide blood flowing through your veins. Look, they're not just a football school anymore. Is Alabama now in the Final Four? Brent Beard, you got family out there. You attended that school. I mean, your thoughts on seeing what your alma mater has done here? They've always had a, a following and a tremendous following when they're playing well. Um, now, and they've had some good coaches in their time with Sam Newton and Wimp Sanderson. Uh, they they actually made the Elite Eight uh, with Mark Godfrey in, in uh, 2004, but Nate Oates has given them some real hope at not only just the style of play, it's fun to watch, although they are a very flawed team, uh, but that they've really risen above the level of where they were. I mean, you remember the um, uh, the SEC tournament in Nashville, hack when Florida just basically destroyed them, um, and they did not look very good going into the NCAA tournament, but they have gathered themselves behind Mark Sears, one of the better guards uh, in the SEC, and being able to... Um, kind of crash the glass ceiling for them, which is get to the uh, Final Four. So you've had Auburn a few years ago make the Final Four, now Alabama do the same thing. And what this is leading to eventually is Alabama getting a new uh, arena for Oates. He got an extension and a raise, uh, but the bottom line is, and look, very few people of any expect them to beat UConn but just to be able to be in the Final Four and get the publicity that goes with this throughout the entire week, you, you really can't put a price on that, can you, Hank? You can't. No, not not at all. You see Brent Beard on First Coast News. You get him weekly here on Hacker After Dark. And the fact that they went through two ACC teams to yes. get to the Final Four, knocking off North Carolina, knocking off Clemson to get to the Final Four. And, Brent, look, I saw a story. Ernie Johnson on the telecast talked about Chris Stewart. Chris Stewart is the play-by-play man on radio for Alabama basketball. I did not know about this story. I don't know, quite frankly, if enough people know about this story. You have uh, some information on it. Just elaborate on some of the things Ernie Johnson said. The fact that Chris Stewart was able to call Alabama winning the game last weekend is a miracle in and of itself. Well, uh, because of the situation now with Eli Gold uh, no longer being the play-by-play voice of Alabama football, Chris Stewart is doing Alabama basketball and football. Uh, Frankly, Chris is a basketball play-by-play guy. is one of the best anywhere. Uh, But Chris, a few years ago, uh, had a stroke and ended up in the hospital, and there were uh, some really precarious moments there. <clears throat> I mean, his family basically uh, at one time or another was called in uh, to say goodbye to him. Uh, they thought he might be that close to death, but fortunately that uh, did not happen. Uh, and he, he, he really, in a lot of ways, 
Hank ended up, as a lot of people do after stroke, uh, having a long, extensive rehab stint and learning to certainly walk again, if not talk again. So it, it has been quite a comeback uh, for Chris. Brian Passick is the uh, Alabama basketball analyst uh, that's old. With, he used to play for Alabama years ago. You may remember that name. But it, it certainly is a, uh, a nice story of how he has overcome a lot of the odds that were there stacked against him and is back behind the microphone. And I'm sure that will probably be brought out more this weekend. Brent, quickly, because I want to get to the scrimmages in both Gainesville and Tallahassee. UConn, Alabama, Purdue, North Carolina State. I think it would be a borderline shock if it wasn't UConn and Purdue in the national title game. But how do you see it? How do you see who's going to cut down the nets there in Phoenix on uh, Monday night? Well, I can't disagree with that. I mean, at this point, uh, um, no one really has even come close to UConn. Um, The uh, Hurley, their coach, made a good statement when when he said, well, we don't do real well in close games, and that's why we have to be there by 20. Um, so, and, and I think that probably will happen. Uh, now, Purdue could give them a real run for their money. Edie, Edie their center, uh, who, in my opinion, is uh, well protected by the officials. He stays in the lane uh, about <laughs> uh, 10 seconds every possession, uh, and commits a lot of fouls that, that are never called. But above and beyond that, uh, that should be a, a great final uh, in many ways. But And look, truthfully, this NC State story is, is, is one of the greatest stories there's ever been from a coach who was on the verge of being fired, uh, but a last-minute shot basically uh, got them into the uh, – uh, at the ACC tournament, uh, and they were able to uh, to win virtually double digit games. So <laughs> that, that's one of the best stories of the whole of the whole tournament, frankly. Yeah, it's a great story. You got a Cinderella in NC State. You got the powerhouse in UConn, the team that's been waiting to get here forever in Purdue, and Alabama's a team that kind of crashed the party. It should be a fun couple of days out there in the Glendale, Phoenix area. A couple of more for Brent Beard. You see him on First Coast News. You get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Brent, we had a couple of scrimmages, both in Gainesville and Tallahassee. Let's go down to Gainesville. Florida was on the field for a scrimmage. Obviously, all eyes on DJ Lagway. What sort of notes do you have from the Gators? Well, uh, Lagway, obviously, just learning his way around and uh, it's one thing to be the Gatorade player of the year, and I think he's going to be a really incredible quarterback at Florida, but he's still having to learn. And Graham Mertz is still the guy, and, and that's the important thing. Uh, the, the, the main note I want to bring out of this is uh, that uh, Shamir Dyke, and I may be mispronouncing that, but he is a transfer from Wisconsin where Mertz came from and was one of Mertz's favorite targets. Uh, And so far, and in the latest scrimmage, uh, they connected several times. Uh, So, look, I think that's a real positive uh, for uh, for Florida. That's the main thing that I got out of the scrimmage. And the second thing would be that Lagway had a rough day, but that's okay. He is learning. He's there. And I think that's the thing that is uh, the, the, the most important. And I'm going to throw George in here real quick, too. Carson Beck had a good scrimmage. Uh, also, an Arian Smith, the receiver, um, is coming around. So uh, good for him with that. As far as Florida State, we talked about DJ Uyungle uh, they're very impressed with him. He's got about 40 starts, and it shows. So, so far, I think so good with that. Uh, Norvell thinks this is his strongest team, and and he thinks that this team could be as good as it was uh, last year. Uh, frankly, they love the running backs. Uh, Rodell Williams is there. 
uh, to a Philly is coming back. So it <clears throat> uh, these scrimmages remind me of um, Major League Baseball and spring training when every, when everyone is very positive act about what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you know, and for people that are curious, um, differences between a scrimmage and the spring game, what you'll see in a couple of weeks, they're basically right. the same thing, right? Just different names? Well, it is. I think what you get in scrimmage is, uh, and some coaches love to do best on best, which means you've got the first team offense and the first team defense going against each other. And some of them just prefer to have the first team offense versus the second or third team defense. So a lot of that just kind of depends uh, on what the coach wants to do. Uh, and sometimes you'll see a lot of that in, in a spring game. We've seen some of that at Florida when they really didn't have enough players. You remember some of those spring games, uh, and they just really had to uh, kind of have a special teams a scrimmage in the midst of it. So uh, good, good point. But – and we'll touch on this more next next week. But, Hank, what Florida really needs to do, they don't need a 10-7 to 7 spring game, do they? Uh, they, they, need, they need to show that they can throw the ball around, that they can score. They need to show that they can get the special teams on the field uh, without any problem uh, and just have a – it's not going to be error-free by any stretch of the imagination – but they, they just need to look confident and that they know what they're doing. Final moments with Brent Beard. You get him locally on First Coast News. You also get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. We mentioned Florida's spring game, April 13th. Florida State's spring game, April 20th. Brent, you alluded to Auburn. Their spring game is coming up this Saturday. Hugh Freeze, year two, out there on the plains. What do they think about Auburn coming into 2024 out there? I think that the, the main thing that they they need is that they need a quarterback, and Peyton Thorne has been the uh, – I mean, he basically was a quarterback last year. He's coming back. They think he's improved. Um, so he's the number one quarterback right now. They've got a freshman wide receiver in Cam Coleman who uh, they are more than excited about. This is – a really much better group of wide receivers. Look, you and I and whoever's in the station uh, could have played wide receiver at Auburn last year. Hey, Denmark uh, is a natural athlete in there, right? Yes. He can get the job done. And and I'm and I'm convinced you and I can uh, take a couple of screen passes and and do do pretty well with them. Uh, but this is where they are. They, that their line of scrimmage is going to be better. And look, they're not going to win the SEC, but they're on kind of a natural progression uh, with, with Hugh Freeze, and, the, and they're hoping that the spring game gives evidence of that. Well, and it's a real chance for Auburn. Look, they've been in purgatory the last decade and a half behind mm -hmm. Nick Saban in their own state, and now Nick Saban's gone, and it's Hugh Freeze and Kalen DeBoer going into these lock, going into these locker rooms in high school and these living rooms. And look, but name recognition alone in this part of the country, the name Hugh Freeze resonates a lot more than the name Kalen DeBoer does. Well, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and people are familiar with what he did, the good and the bad at Ole Miss, and also the job that he did, uh, too, at Liberty. Uh, and I also want to mention um, uh, that they've got a – freshman quarterback by the name of Walker White, who they like a lot. I think he's a, uh, a dual threat guy, so we'll, we'll watch that. But, yes, they, they started early, and they're going to be ending early. Now, obviously, Missouri is already finished, and they had their spring game. <laughs> That's, and they had that in March. Uh, but uh, Auburn is coming up, and over the next two weeks, basically, all – the rest of the of the conference will be having their spring games, and and I'm going to throw this out here, and I've I've added this to my notes, and I've got to get used to it too. But we'll be talking about Oklahoma and Texas spring games, Hack. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be something we're not used to yet. And talking about Jackson Arnold, the quarterback, for instance, at Oklahoma, 
and we all know about Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, but uh, those are two teams that, that are going to become very familiar with us in the next few months. Brent, as we say goodbye, that's a great point. I mean, when we talk about, you know, UCF, it still doesn't really resonate with a lot of people there in the Big 12. I mean, they are. You right. know, now when you right. talk about Cal and Stanford and SMU, it's not yes. going to resonate with people that they're in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but they are. Yes. I mean, Texas and Oklahoma are bigger names, but as college football approaches, I mean, we're in April. You know, media days is three months away. The The first game is, you know, August 24th. We're four and a half months away from college football returning, and it's going to be the craziest college football season we've ever seen. Well, and, and also because of the extended playoff, uh, that we are talking about 12 teams, not just four. And I can tell you this is going on behind the scenes, and this is very likely to happen uh, before, say, the middle of August when the deadline is. But Florida State is leaving the ACC, and they're likely going to the Big Ten. And then Clemson and North Carolina are going to be uh, shortly behind them as they depart uh so uh you're right there are a lot of balls we're juggling in the air uh and thinking about next year that's going to be a season that we've never had before and to your point we need a roster don't we Hag? just to figure out where all the teams are because of there, there are going to be a lot of people who haven't paid attention to this in that first week of the season when they realize some of the teams you mentioned are not where they used to be. Yeah, all the jumping of conference to conference. And, oh, by the way, you mentioned the playoff. It's going to be a five-month college football season beginning August 24th, and the national championship game won't be played until January the 20th. You see Brent Beard on First Coast News. You also get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Brent, next week we'll review the Auburn spring game, and we will preview – the orange and blue game, which, again, is a week from Saturday down in Gainesville. As always, thank you, my friend. Yep, glad to do it, but We'll look forward to next week. And thank you to my buddy Brent Beard. You see him locally on First Coast News. You get him weekly here on Hacker After Dark. And, yeah, you know, it's really interesting with spring football going on, Florida, Florida State, Miami. Expectations at all three schools, I think, are very different. For Florida State, even though they got to replace a lot of guys, they feel they were cheated last year. I would tend to agree with them that they were cheated last year. So they want to, you know, run it back, if you will, prove all the naysayers wrong. But they're going to have to do that without a lot of stars from that team. Keon Coleman, Jared Verse, Johnny Wilson, Trey Benson, Jordan Travis, Braden Fisk, right, just to name a few. A ton of guys are gone. They think they've replaced them as best they can. We'll see, but they have spring practice going on. The Garnet and Gold game is on April the 20th. As far as Miami, year two for Mario Cristobal was better than year one. Still not great, right? Still didn't meet the expectation of Miami Hurricane fans, so it's a big year for Mario Cristobal. They have a brand-new quarterback in Cam Ward, the transfer from Washington State. They obviously have that opener with Florida on August the 31st, which is just an absolutely gigantic game for both Cristobal and Napier and both the Hurricanes and the Gators. And then speaking of Florida, boy, expectations are nothing. They're not, all right? You know, win-loss projections are coming out. Florida's at five and a half. Most people don't think Florida's going to make a bowl game again. If they don't make a bowl game again, does that – Spell the end of Billy Napier after year three. Uh, I would like to think Florida will win enough to go to a bowl game, but again, you objectively look at that Florida football schedule and you find me six wins on that schedule, right? Can they beat Miami? Yeah, but I guarantee it, no. Can they beat A&M? Yeah, but I guarantee it, no. Can they beat Mississippi State, Tennessee, Kentucky, Yeah, they can, right? UCF, they can win all those games, but they could very easily lose all those games. Is anybody going to pick them to beat Georgia here at the cocktail party? Is anybody going to pick them to go to Austin and beat Texas or beat Ole Miss, the best Ole Miss team they believe in decades, LSU? And then, of course, in Tallahassee against Florida State, it is in 35 years 
of following Gator football. It is absolutely on paper the hardest schedule for the Gators I can ever remember. Now, again, like we've talked about, schedules in March and April can look daunting, can look very tasking, but at the, you know September and October, they don't appear to be like that. In reality, we'll see if that's the case. But right now, based on what we're going on right now, the schedule on paper, it is the hardest schedule that I can ever remember, and it's really the perfect storm for Billy Napier. Not only is he playing a ridiculous schedule, but he's certainly on the hot seat entering 2024. Well, that'll just about do it. It has been a very busy Tuesday night edition here of Hacker After Dark. Glad to be with you at 8 o'clock, 8 to 10 on Tuesdays. We're 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock now every night of the week here on Hacker After Dark. Not that I didn't love the 10 to midnight show on Tuesdays, but certainly to be back and glad to be with you from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock now on Tuesdays as we are every other night of the week. We have a ton of people to thank. Again, my buddy Brent Beard, you see him on First Coast News. You get him weekly here on Hacker After Dark. Thank you to Mark Wise of ESPN for previewing the Final Four with us. UConn, Alabama, NC State, and Purdue. Those games will take place on Saturday with the two winners meeting next Monday for the national championship. I would be borderline shocked if it's not UConn and Purdue, but we'll see. Alabama's already knocked off a one seed in North Carolina. NC State has knocked off some very good teams as well, including Duke, including Marquette. So we'll see what happens in the final four out there in Glendale, Arizona. And thank you to my buddy Chad Forbes. Back in hour number one, Chad's an NFL news and rumors guy. You follow him on social media at NFL Draft Bites. What I always say about Chad, don't ask his opinion if you don't want it right down the middle. He's going to shoot you straight every time, whether you like what he says or whether you don't like what he says. We'll be back tomorrow night on a Wednesday, and we will do it all over again beginning at 8 o'clock. Dylan Denmark was your producer tonight. Dylan, great job as always. I'm the hacker Ryan Green. And again, Jacksonville, thank you for spending part of your Tuesday evening with us right here on Hacker After Dark on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. Here's Linda Beaver. Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet have just received a special allocation of